Power by Ecotech. Hello guys, Victor here with Worldwide Corals. In today's episode, we're gonna be showing you guys the system behind me. It's another 750 gallon tank. It's system number 12, we call it the Chromis Reef. Uh, it's got tons of aquapores. It's a beautiful mixed reef. So follow us along, we're gonna be showing you today. We call it the Chromis Reef. We didn't know how to differentiate them apart. Every time we talked about it, like, oh, the 750 gallon tank. And it wasn't, it didn't give justice to the fact that we have three of them. So the first one, we called it the Bangai because we got a bunch of Bangai Cardinals. The second one, we have a couple trigger fish, so we call it the trigger reef. And this one, we have a bunch of chromis, so we call it the chromis reef. Uh, what's different on this one from the other ones, this one is a full mixed reef. It is, it is mainly aquaporous, I will say about 70% of it. As you guys can tell, it's been overgrown by a lot. Uh, I want to say we're getting in a bad week, 100 frags. In a good week, we're getting 200 frags a week out of this system. If we don't do that, then corals are literally killing each other. And even though I was getting that many frags, it's still not enough room to let all the corals grow. Uh, the calcium reactor that we run on the system is a georeactor. It's a C, uh, CR1218. We got them from CDAR when we first opened the farm about two and a half years ago. Uh, it's the only calcium reactors that we use. We're very happy with them. Thank you, CDAR. Again, you cannot go wrong with them. They've been around for a long time. They're made in the U.S. The calcium demand is very heavy on the system because we have tons of aquapora. We also dose cogwasser on this specific system just to be able to keep up with all the demand. So a lot of people ask us, why did we put a parafish into our reef? Well, I had the same question two and a half years ago when JW first did it. I looked at him with a fish like, what are you doing? You out of your mind? So he goes, relax, relax, it's reef safe. I go, there's no way a parrot is gonna be reef safe. So we watched him for the next year and tell you the truth, he worked to the point that he's never picked up a coral. He picks up the rocks, he picks up some of the coral line, picks up some of the sand. And we're so happy with it that if you go on the retail floor next to the 1500 gallon tank, there's a 500 gallon Acropora dominated tank. We do have a pair of fish in there as well. So we love them, it's a great fish. So it's no secret that we love our copper band butterfly fish to keep the Aptaceous at bay or keep them gone. Uh, the problem with keeping a co copper band butterfly fish, to get a good one, you have to go to many, many fish because they're very finicky. It's a fish that is known not to do that well in captivity, especially when it first comes from the wild. So we run our fish through quarantine to be able to put it into our reef. So you might go to three or four or five fish that they don't do well and then to find the healthy specimen and then hope and keep your fingers crossed that when you put it into the reef, the fish is not gonna get beat up by the other fish, by all the fish of the territorial. And then you gotta hope that the fish doesn't find an appetite for live coral. Uh, we take big pride on keeping our fish with no lateral line, keeping their fins 100% perfect. And it's not like if they have a problem, we get rid of them. What we notice if you give a fish a healthy environment where they're not stressed, you give them the right nutrient foods and you give them the algae that they need to be grazing on all day, uh, we just noticed that the fish, they just get very shiny, very fat, happy. They got a great attitude. They don't, they don't become aggressive towards each other. I don't know if you ever noticed, but let your, your tanks and your fish, don't give them algae for three or four days, and you see how they literally, they're picking each other, they start cutting each other with their fins. They become very aggressive, you know, no different than us. If you skip a couple meals, we get hangry, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, same, same exact thing, guys. Uh, just treat your fish well, make sure they got enough room for swimming, make sure the, the water parameters are right, you're giving them the right diet and talk to them, give them lots of love. Some of them even let us pet them, you know? Creating a, a, reef, a mixed reef can be very challenging. Uh, the reef behind us, I will compare it similar to the 1500. I would say it's mainly dominated by aquaporas, about 70, 80%, and the rest by uh, other corals. The challenge when you do a mixed reef is finding the happy nutrients for LPS, softies, and acroporas, you know? And then finding the lining that is gonna be enough for the acropora, but not bleach the other coral. So it has a lot to do with flow patterns, a lot of nutrients, a lot of feeding, and just understanding, uh, just having a lot of experience with running a reef. So if I were to do it all over, what would I do different? I would have tried to make the display tanks a little bigger, even though I didn't think I had enough room. I would have made them double the size, maybe like 1,500 gallons each. And instead of putting six raceways in the back, being one gigantic frag tank, that is one body of water. The problem that we have, like I was mentioning earlier, for instance, if we find Aptasia in, in one system, you have to put a copper band on each system to keep those Aptasias gone. 
So therefore, it becomes challenging when you're dealing with adjusting lights, adjusting flow, looking for a copper band, dealing with a specific issue that you might have to be dealing. If there's an algae breakdown, you might have it on one raceway, not on the other, and now you have to make sure that you have more tanks in here, or you might have a warfare algae problem, and you don't have a nasal tank in that specific raceway. So therefore, if it was one body of water, most likely you would have a nasal tank in there to take care of that specific algae problem, you know? So that's the only thing I would have done different. Just bigger display tank and just less raceways having the same as square footage, hopefully, to raise corals. All right, 12A, guys. I'm very excited with this system. I've been wanting to show you this. Uh, we're growing a lot of Leptoceres, Pectinias, Montiporas, Fabias. There's tons of uh, Symphilia Wilsonites. I mentioned it earlier on the first video, on part one, on system 10. It's hands down the toughest corals we ever had to grow. Uh, it's just such a finicky coral. It takes a long time to get that coral healthy. Uh, we're growing um, Grandis Palitoas, leathers, a um, little bit of everything, more mycediums. Uh, it's a great system. We keep the lights very, very low here. Uh, we keep it at 40%. We grow a lot of mushrooms, a lot of ricordias. Uh, corals that tend to like less light, you know? This system here, guys, it is incredible. This is 12B, we, we run the lights at 8%. This one, we have an extra light. Why is that? We have all Acroporus in here, and we're growing these Hawaiian uh, bubble tip anemones. We've been growing them for about three years. We started with a few of them. We, no joke guys, we're producing anywhere from 30 to 50 of these a month. Uh, you guys can see in the bag, we calculate there's gotta be about 200 of them. Uh, JW has a rule, I always ask them, JW, how do you keep them at bay in the bag? How do you keep them in the rock? It goes very easy. The minute they walk out of their rocks, they go into the basket and they get sold. So they kind of train each other not to like, hey, you want to be sold? You're going to walk out of the rock. So they stay on the rocks. No joke, guys. They've been there for two years and uh, we've been happy with them. They're just, it's a sight to see. We're 100% we're aquaculture in these. Uh, here we got tons of aquaporas, backup mother colonies, as you guys can see. Um, we just frag from, this is specific tank right here from this Acropora, we're getting 200 Acropora frags every single week out of 12B. This is another system that I like a lot. This is system 12C. Uh, we're growing tons and tons of zoanthids here, but on the back, you guys see, you guys can see we're growing their mother colonies of our cabbage leathers, and we're growing the space invader, space invader pectinians in the back. As you guys can see, we have tons of them. We grow little mini colonies. As you guys can see, we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. There's about 30 mother colonies in there. And every time uh, they get a little bigger, we grab all 30, we cut them in half, we got 60. We sell the 30 and we go back to having 30. It's just a true aquaculture and process what we're doing back here. All right, system 12D, light uh, percentage 55%. Uh, this system is all, 95% of them is all zoanthids uh, frags of every possible imaginable name that you can think of. We have a little bit of everything, you know. Little Shop of Horrors in there. We have some vivid rainbows. A uh, little bit of everything, guys. Some bloodshots, some rastazoas, some Bob Marleys, some Pandoras some Red People Eaters, some Captain Americas. So those are frags over there, like we looked in 12D. Now we're on system 12E. Light is at 50%. This is our mother colony of zoanthids. They're very, very happy. They're super healthy. There's a database where we keep track of all these names. Uh, in the back, you guys can see we're growing some clove polish, more grandis palitoas, couple burners. There's even an acupora in there. Don't ask me why. It's got to be JW hoarding something like he always does. And last but not least, this is Frag Tank 12F. Light is at 45%. If you guys look on the back, this coral goes unnoticed a lot. It used to come a lot while from Fiji. Little bit comes from Indonesia. It is a high nophora coral. Uh, it's a finicky coral, guys. We've been very successful uh, aquaculture on it for the past year or so. It's, it's a very basic coral, but I still I love it. It's never gonna go away in my head. Uh, we're growing tons of um, 
clove polyps, uh, pipe organs, Ternaria, Montiporas, Stelosonelia, we're growing Montipora colonies here. We got Jason Fox beach bomb right here. A um, little bit of everything, guys. Um, super healthy, as you guys can see. All right, guys, you guys seen all three videos of the 750 gallon tanks. Hopefully you guys got tons of information. If you have any questions, don't forget to post them below. Uh, stay on the lookout for more updates in the future. On the meantime, we'll be posting more videos. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow our channel. We'll see you guys soon.